everybody makes mistakes. It is a simple fact of life, and it is nothing to be ashamed of. Video game glitches aren't exactly life or death scenarios beyond their own capacity to kill your on-screen avatar, and so sometimes when a developer cries wolf on their bug, they actually mean it. it. It actually wasn't a bug at all, but left in for your, or rather their, amusement. So let's take a look at them today. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video game mistakes left in to troll you. Number 10. Beyond the Eye of the Tiger – Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped The PlayStation Crash Bandicoot trilogy could be a right pain in the marsupial at times, demanding pixel-perfect platforming as the eponymous hero ran and span his way down what would effectively be a series of themed tunnels. The bosses were hardly any easier, as anyone who succumbed to Tiny the Tiger's disproportionately diminutive pride of lions in Crash 3 will attest to. Luckily for hapless players, there was a neat little trick. Planting Crash in one sweet spot in the top left of Tiny's Colosseum made him entirely impervious to all of the caged lions, even as they mauled right through him, reducing the challenge by half. How do you like those Wampa fruit? And anyone with a good memory of this would actually presume that this exploit had been fixed in Vicarious Vision's otherwise faithful 2017 reproduction of the PS1 classics. But no, proving that the tiger cannot indeed change its stripes, this strategy works just as well, only now the audience mockingly lob wedges of Ched at players cheesy enough to try it. Number 9. The Green Choo Choo Jelly – Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess Everybody with a primary education in chromatography knows that blue plus yellow equals green. Everybody except Nintendo, apparently, who failed to predict that such coloured variants of the genetically mutable Chew enemy from their gothic lupine adventure Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess would meld to form a green being. Nor, unlike most kindergarten kids, did they anticipate that the resultant jelly left behind by these slain sentient slimes would be similarly verdant. When Link picks up said jelly, the description is entirely blank, at least in the Wii version. The actual story is that the green chew jelly was originally intended for the concoction of magic restoring potions, only for Nintendo to axe Link's magic meter at the last minute. They simply forgot to dummy out the now useless green chews, resulting in the empty text. For the Wii U HD port, rather than erase their mistakes, Nintendo decided to have a little fun. Green Chew Jelly remains, but now the game tells you that it doesn't look all that tasty. Interestingly, Nintendo's colour theory was even further put off in the GameCube original. Here, blue and yellow chews morph into purple chews. Now that's just not science, but it did mean that the offending green jelly was absent. Number 8. Piranha Wipeout Thanks to the collaboration of Brit Cool Graphic Design Studio, The Designers Republic, 1995's pioneering PlayStation racer Wipeout presented a supremely stylish yet realistic vision of the future. That realism, it seems, extended to the gradual and sadly inevitable decay of spelling standards. For some inexplicable reason, the series' is, 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 is third iteration, the otherwise ultra-polished Wipeout 3, manages to badly bungle the name of Team Piranha Advanced, displaying them as Team Piranha uh, uh. And the manual is hardly any better, calling them Team Pirhan with the wrong logo. It's not an overly common or especially intuitive spelling, and so a translation error here is pretty understandable. But here's the thing, despite Wipeout 3's Neo-Tokyo aesthetic, this was developed in Leeds. Now, to be fair, West Yorkshire City isn't particularly known for tropical man-eating fish, but still, you would have thought that they had a dictionary to hand. By the next game, Wipeout Fusion, the fictionally Brazilian team had apparently hired a proofreader, because they're now rendered correctly as Piranha. According to the game, the name change came following the merger of two smaller teams, Pier and Hana, hence the misspelling. This was even referenced in the prequel Wipeout 2048, which features a prototype racer from the nascent team under the banner of Pier Hana. See, they meant it all along, clearly. Number 7. Lara's <coughs> Assets – Tomb Raider Now, if you remember anything about Tomb Raider besides the actual raiding of Tomb, it is Lara Croft's um, razor-sharp assets. In fact, so ludicrous are Lara's polygonal pointers that it's easy to think that they must have been some sort of mistake, you know, a piece of bust coding, if you will. And indeed, that is precisely the case, as Core Design's Nigel West explained during a press conference in 2000. According to the programmer, a simple miscalculation resulted in Miss Croft's massively exaggerated proportions, which, owing to the large state of the game's development, simply could not be reversed, even though it would have taken like five seconds to do so. When publishers Eidos saw the character, they 
a reason that people probably wouldn't notice that Lara looked like a doorstop and that her inflated chest wouldn't affect the game's sales. Obviously, and eye-rollingly, they were bang on. Number 6. The Bucket Trick – Skyrim If you've seen any of the Ocean films, you'll know that a big-money heist requires elaborate planning, picture-perfect execution, and an all-star Hollywood cast numbering in the dozens. Unless you've played Skyrim, that is, in which case you'll know that the above is a load of bum fluff. All you really need to pull off a crime? In fact, the crime of the century is a commonly found bucket. Plonk it on the head of the nearest security or royal or Swiss guard and abracadabra, you're invisible. From this point forward, any felony you commit will go completely unnoticed, and you can literally fill your boots scot-free. Now, even though this works, this wasn't supposed to, as this get-out-of-jail bug was unearthed by coders just as Skyrim was being prepared to go gold. But they decided that it was so hilariously ridiculous that they would leave it in as a reward for any player devious enough to try it. It appears that the philosophy here was a riff on a more common idiom, being that if it doesn't break, don't fix it. Number 5. Not So Plain Sailing – Grand Theft Auto San Andreas The apex of Rockstar's sandbox crime sim Grand Theft Auto San Andreas presents a less rose-tinted view of the 90s to the one generally espoused on nostalgic talking head shows. Though the Clinton years are considered a time of prosperous, peaceful American splendor, the tail end of the Bush administration was characterized by rising racial tension resulting in riots and the Gulf War, something that San Andreas captures in a microcosm through its grunge gangs and egregious prejudice. Oh, and also this game had planes that just fell out of the sky. Because thanks to the random generation of flight paths in this game, it does mean that they have a rather unfortunate tendency to plow straight into the ground. Players were right to assume that passenger planes de-skying left, right and centre was an oversight on Rockstar's part, but the devs found it so hilariously befitting of their little slab of misery that they just left it in. Number 4. Hotsuma's Scarf – Shinobi What's the least practical item of clothing for a super stealthy ninja whose moves require accurate agility and unerring precision? Wondered Sega aloud when they sat down to design Hotsuma, the titular ninja of their PS2 revival of the shuriken lobbing classic Shinobi? Well, having come up with the correct answer, which was a bright red six foot long scarf, they promptly equipped him with it and called it a day. On the one hand, this oversized muffler makes aesthetic sense. Hotsuma cuts a graceful figure as he runs along Shinobi's walls, his scarf twirling like a rhythmic gymnast's baton. Form also follows function when it came to the eye-catching colour, because Sega picked bright red so that the speedy protagonist could be visually identifiable amidst the on-screen action. It seems, though, that maybe it was a bit too long. And that's because it sort of is. This scarf, only fit for a giraffe, was originally introduced as a gag on a programmer's behalf, but the team thought that it looked so cool that they left it in. And in fact, they stretched it out even further. Number 3. The Varia Suit – Metroid Amongst Metroid's otherwise prosaically named upgrades such as the long beam and the high jump boots, the Varia Suit stands out as particularly cool and particularly otherworldly. But you see, it's actually a mistake, as Varia is simply a phonetic misromanization of Barrier, as confirmed by the English language manual. Nevertheless, it sounded sufficiently neat and so the name caught on, such that it became official in the Game Boy sequel Metroid 2 Return of Samus, albeit with the retcon explanation that the arcane item or substance known as Varia enabled the suit's barrier. Come the peerless Super Metroid, Nintendo had given up trying to pull the wool, and so Samus's iconic getup was now simply known as the Varia Suit. And that was that. Barrier? Nah, we never said that. Number 2. The 5 Second Rule – Portal It doesn't matter how elaborately or intricately you design your game's levels, if a player can break them for a slightly easier, albeit much duller, ride, they'll not hesitate to do so. And so it goes for Portal. As seemingly watertight as the design of Valve's classic first-person puzzler is, there is, rather appropriately for a game based around Einstein panicking shortcuts, one level which can be entirely skipped with a bit of lateral thinking. With laser-like precision and flawless timing, Chamber 14 can be completed in mere seconds by bypassing the puzzles altogether. You'd imagine foregoing all that lovely brain-melting content wasn't in Valve's plans, and indeed, it wasn't, until they discovered the exploits themselves when playtesting the game. Reasoning that only the most skilled portaliers would ever be able to manage it, they left it in, and set the time attack medal devilishly low just for those smarty pants who figured this trick out. And number one, everything. Goat Simulator. 
Goat Simulator must earn some sort of special award for being the first game in history of the medium to have players flocking to forums seeking answers on how to make it crash. And that is because it has a special award for those who manage to make their Capra stop responding. And we're not kidding here, the involuntary QA achievement can only be earned by forcing Coffee Stain Studios' irreverent game to return to the desktop. But ironically, the game is so well proofed against critical errors that it not crashing is a source of considerable frustration amongst the gamer score hunting player base. There's pretty much only one guaranteed method involving a bit of command console jiggery pokery. Not to say that Goat Simulator is otherwise free of bugs, in fact, it celebrates them. The developers purposefully left in any glitch which A didn't break the game and B was funny. That's why, unlike most games, the box proudly advertises that it contains more bugs than any other game. It's kind of brilliant, really. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video game mistakes left in to troll you. I hope that you enjoyed that and let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. If you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice as my personal gaming channel where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. Hope to see you over there. But before I go, my friends, I just want to say one thing. Even though we detailed about video game mistakes, as I said in the beginning, everybody makes mistakes in their lives and you shouldn't beat yourself up for mistakes that you've made in the past. Try to forgive yourself and use compassion and understanding with others if they have made mistakes or slighted you if you have the capacity to do so. Because trust me, letting go of that hate, letting go of that remorse is the only way to go forward and live a healthier and happier life. You deserve better than that. So let's make it happen. As always, I have been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.